everyone, welcome back. Technical Talk, episode two, right? Here we go. Uh, today we're going to be discussing microphones. And the, there's, you know, there's so many microphones out there, it's ridiculous. The choices that you have, the options, all of this stuff. I will talk about and discuss microphones that I have personally used myself. Like I said, there, there's no way I can cover all of the, the different ones out there. But what I can do is pass on some information to you guys from the from the items that I've actually test and use myself. This is the Blue Snowball microphone. This was my very first microphone I ever used for commentaries. Commentaries, not live commentaries, but commentaries over video games. Uh, it's a very, very small little package here. Really durable, it comes with a stand. Uh, it also obviously can, can go up in the air like this. It's just got a simple USB to plug into your computer to power it up. And again, we'll go over the specs here in a minute. We've got three positions for the different patterns. And this is a front addressed microphone. So when you talk into this thing, you talk into the front of it right here. That is the, the Blue Snowball microphone from Blue Microphones. It's very good. And let's go ahead and go through the tech specs and you can hear how it sounds. All right, now we're talking into the Blue Snowball microphone. This is a condenser mic with a USB out. It has two polar positions, omnidirectional and cardoid. Cardoid is the one you will use to do podcasting and voice over gameplay. It does have three frequency response positions. And for the price, this is a very good microphone. This is the Blue Snowball mic. That was the, the Blue Snowball. Again, my first microphone that I ever used, and it's a, it's a pretty nice pretty nice unit. You, you can't really go wrong with any of these microphones that I'm gonna be showing you today. Let's move right in to the next one that I have here, and this is the Blue, this is also another Blue microphone. This is called the Yeti, all right? And you can, you can it comes with this stand here, you can see from the side comes with this stand or you can then mount it on an arm. Now this is a microphone that I currently use. I currently use this one in all of my Minecraft type games that you see and a lot of my live commentaries that you'll see like when I'm doing zombies and stuff. Right here, if you see this, can you see this arm? I have it hanging on the arm here. It's got a shock mount, which is an accessory that we'll talk about. It's also got a pop filter on here. But I can swing it over that way when I do commentaries when I'm playing console. But this is what I normally talk into right here. It sits right here. It's all set up, ready to go. It can swing out of the way. So these, these boom arms are really nice, and we're going to talk about it in the, the accessories. So let's go ahead and, and go into the tech specs, and we'll speak into this microphone so you guys can hear it. So let's go into the Blue Yeti. All right, so this is the Blue Yeti microphone, and on the illustration on the right, you can see the four different patterns that this mic provides. Stereo, cardoid, omnidirectional, and bidirectional. The cardoid is the normal pattern pattern you would use when speaking into this over gameplay or doing a one-on-one -on -one type interview. The illustration on the left shows some of the basic options with the microphone such as the mute button, you have the master volume for the headphone output, where the USB jack is located as well as the threaded mic stand mount. You can mount that then on your shock absorber or your boom arm. You have your mic gain control and the polar pattern selector switch on the back. This is the blue Yeti microphone. That was the Blue Yeti. This is a very, very good microphone. Uh, I, I really enjoy that a lot. Now before we step up to the next level, what I wanted to talk about is this one. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is the microphone that I'm currently talking into right now. It is mounted on my camera and it is a shotgun microphone. You can see from the bottom, all I have is the box because it's, I'm using it right now, it's mounted. So there it is, it mounts, it mounts um, right onto your camera here. And it's a short, short shotgun microphone. It's only about four inches long and I've got this regular, um, you know, pop filter that goes onto it. And I also have one that they call the dead cat. It looks like, you know, it looks all hairy and it, it really helps with wind. This one here is the Rode Podcaster. Okay, this is the Rode Podcaster. These are made in Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Very good, very good microphones. Just like the video mic, 
Rode. This is a Rode. The, also, these boom arms that I use, they are Rode uh, PSA 1 boom arms as well. Rode, a very good company when it comes to uh, their manufacturing. Very, very stout. This has got some serious weight to it. Uh, you can see the the different options like the headphones, the uh, uh, mic, uh, the audio adjustment for the headphones, how you mount, and there you know there's the USB mount. Again, this has a regular mount where you could mount it on something like this. It'll mount on the desktop, but the way I use it, I use it on a bo another boom arm. So if you can see this boom arm here, you can see the thing hanging. This is where this is normally mounted. It mounts right in here in the shock mount. And it just it tightens up. There's a there's a threaded like a giant washer here that threads in and it holds that microphone in place right there. This is the microphone that I currently use for my fun throughs, my playthroughs, because I do it on this computer here. So this is the mic I'm I'm using currently. Um, this is a very, very good microphone. Let's go into the tech specs on this so you guys can hear it. Alright everyone, so this is the Rode Podcaster mic. You can see some of the basic uh, specifications here. The acoustic principle is dynamic. Active electronics is an analog signal with an A to D converter, which is an analog to digital converter with the USB interface. You can see it has the same cardoid pattern as some of the other microphones, but what it talks about in this one is the cardoid will pick up audio from the front and the sides while rejecting sounds from the rear. What that means is, the, it is an end address type unit, but if you move your head from side to side, because it will still pick up the audio, it'll balance out and it won't sound, you won't hear the variations in your voice if you move your head around as you're talking. So these are the basic specifications for the Rode Podcaster microphone. Okay, so that was the Rode Podcaster mic. Very nice microphone. I, I really enjoy this mic. Now, coming down to the end here, is the the big daddy of the microphones that I have. This is the Electro Voice RE20. Now this is unique from all these other mics in that this is not a USB mic. This is a uh, XLR mic. This does not take a USB cord. This takes an XLR cord and hopefully I'll be able to show you the ends. If you're familiar at all with musical instruments you can see they're three pin, three pin XLR connections. Uh, this microphone is very, very good for voice podcasts. Now, it is very expensive, and this is the microphone that I wouldn't recommend for doing any of your average type stuff that all these other mics would cover. Uh, this microphone, because of the price and because of the post-processing that you need to do. To use this microphone here into a computer like these, you need something like this device here, which is a USB audio interface. Okay, so what this what this unit here will do, this is called the Blackjack from Mackie. It's one of the, the least expensive ones, but it's it also shortens you on the options that you have. So you'll bring the XLR connections in from the microphone here, and it gives you a USB out to your computer. And these have uh, gain controls, which you need about, I think you need about 60 dB of gain on this mic for it to uh, for it to really work and be able to be loud enough to go over gameplay and the other thing is that this is analog and that this is mono this will come into your system on a single mono channel so again there's a lot more post processing that you have to do with these microphones um, so I don't really recommend this for, for the average person just looking for a very versatile microphone. Price and, uh, and availability and versatility of these other microphones is much better than, than this uh, RE20, even though the quality is really good. So we'll go into the tech specs quickly on the RE20 and let you hear what this thing sounds like. All right, everyone, we're at our final microphone here. This is the Electrovoice RE20. Case material is steel. The element is dynamic. It has a cardoid polar pattern and a passive power requirement. Being that it's a three pin XLR connection, we are using a USB audio interface made by Mackie to bring the audio into the PC. Once we get it into our audio program, however, we do have to do post-production work to combine the mono channel into stereo. This is a gold standard in broadcasting microphones, though I would not recommend this for voice over gameplay because of the price and the post-production work needed. 
This is the Electrovoice RE20. All right, so that was the RE20. You can hear just the depth that this thing has. Now, quickly going into some of the accessories. So these two microphones here have built-in pop filters. <clears throat> One thing I didn't address was the was address. The address type on this you on the Yeti is forward. A lot of people think it's in the top and it's not. The address is right here based off the patterns that you've got an omnidirectional pattern, the cardoid, the stereo, the different patterns, but your address will be in the front side of this, okay? Same thing with the snowball. These are end type addressed, meaning you talk directly into the end of these. That's how these work. So very important because if you're talking into the wrong area here and it's supposed to be addressed in a certain way, it's going to make your voice sound different. These two microphones are a lot less sensitive to you like moving your head around. Like if you're moving your head around, it won't, it won't, let, you know, your voice won't change nearly as much with these two. With these, they're very sensitive for you to be right in front of them speaking directly into the pattern. These here, not so much. These are a little more forgiving, but again, price-wise, that, that's there's a big difference between them. Accessories, everyone must use a pop filter. Here is a, like a $6 pop filter. It just, it clamps on to anything. It's bendable, you bend it up. What you want to do is you get it in front of where you're going to be speaking, okay? And you talk through this thing into the microphone. So p -p when you pop p -p peas and things like that where you're blowing air, it doesn't pop. I hear so many people doing it. So many, a lot of very big, big YouTubers and people who do podcasts, you got to use a pop filter, okay? Because if you listen... I listen with a with a surround sound system with a subwoofer here, and when people pop their microphones, the bass kicks in. It's like it's probably exaggerated. So if you're listening on like a little on your little earbuds or on some cheesy speaker, it probably won't matter as much. But to me, it, it matters a lot. Here's here's about a fifteen dollar one. This is much. You can see it's much bigger. Gives you more range. This would be good if you were clamping it on maybe that arm up there you know, the, the swing arm, and then you'd be talking into it. It's very big, you see how large that is? It's got two nets, and it works, that one works really good too, it's about $15. Uh, this one here, if you can see this, this is a metal pop filter from Blue, works really good. Um, it's, it's much smaller, more direct, but again, these particular microphones, you wanna be able to talk directly into them. Some of the other accessories would be shock mounts, okay? So this is a shock mount here. This is for the RE20, which this would go in just like this. What this does is if someone bangs on the table or if you hit your elbow while you're talking, that sound won't resonate up and through this shock mount and get into your microphone, okay? So these shock mounts are very handy, but if, if it's, it's kind of unique for your situation, you may not need them. This right here may work for you or this. But just know that if you're talking into this thing and you're banging on your table, that noise is gonna come up and get right into these microphones. Very easy. So you get them off your desk and you get them shock mounted. You, you know, it's the farther down you wanna go for more professional quality is, is looking at pop filters. You know, looking at shock mounts, looking at boom arms and things of that sort. These are these are very important things the farther you go down the line with the quality that you're looking for. So to end this up, I wrote down the prices again. So basically a ranged price for a snowball microphone right now I saw found on Amazon is between sixty and eighty dollars for that. Okay, you can probably find them cheaper. Very, very good mic. Anyone who's thinking of starting up something on YouTube, this is what you want to do right here. The Blue Snowball microphone, or I mean the Blue Yeti microphone, these are about $100. I've seen them 80, I've seen them 120, so about $100 you can get these for, which is a pretty good price for all the options that you get on this one. Moving over to the Rode, this is the Rode Podcaster again. This is one of my favorite mics right now because of the quality that it has. <clears throat> this is $230 you see a significant step up in price from these two to these two. $230, but the quality, I mean, you can, you can feel the difference. I don't think that most people need to go past this level. This is, uh, this is like a new level of, 
of sound that you're looking for in these microphones here. And finally, the Electro, Vo Electro Voice RE20 is $450, all right? This is very, very heavy. It's like a tank. $450, that's why I said most people, most of you guys out there would stay way far away. Because you got $450 for this, and remember, you've got to add on all these audio interfaces as well. There's a lot to add to this, so. These, uh, uh, basically, the boom arms are about $100, the Rode PSA, PSA-1s. This Electro Voice, this, this particular one is for the RE20. This thing is 100 bucks on its own. So some of the pricing, and then around for the for the one for the road is about forty five dollars, and the the shock mounts you're looking at about fifty fifty five dollars for the Yeti one for the really good one. It's hard to see, but it's it's a big ring, and they're they're very good. So I hope that I was able to to cover some some microphone stuff here with you. Again, these are microphones that I've used myself, and that now you've been able to hear each one and see the tech specs on them. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.